Hello everybody and welcome back to 3D App. My name is Xander and today we're going to be continuing on our episodes on FDM 3D printing uh, by starting off a series that's going to talk about the material science, the good, the bad, the ugly of different filament materials, how to use them, where do they adhere, where do they adhere, I don't even know, let's find out together. So with all that being said, our first episode today is going to be on PLA. So without further ado, let's get into it. So over the course of this episode, we're going to look at what is PLA, what types of PLA are there, what are the properties of PLA, what are the benefits of PLA, what are the shortcomings of PLA, what are the optimal print settings for PLA, and troubleshooting PLA issues. So what is PLA? Well, PLA, or polylactic acid, is a renewable material made from fermented cornstarch, cassava, sugarcane, or sugar beet pulp, depending on where in the world you're at. Uh, its chemical formula is C3H4O2, or 3 carbon, 4 hydrogen, 2 oxygen. Uh, PLA is classified as a polyester material, and it was discovered by Wallace Carruthers of DuPont in the 1920s. By the way, he also discovered nylon. Now let's talk about the properties of PLA. So the melting temperature is between 178 and 240 degrees Celsius. It has a relative density of 1.24 grams per cubic centimeter, a tensile strength of 61 to 66 megapascals, a flexural strength of 48 to 110 megapascals, and a generalized shrink rate of 0.37 to 0.41%. And now we're gonna look at what types of PLA there are. There are a wide variety of PLA materials available. Basic PLA, which is a generic material that can be made of a mix of PLLA and PDLA. Then we have PLA Plus, or Tough, which is a PLA with added plastics, additional additives, and or pigments to help improve on the relative weakness of PLA. Uh, this is becoming more popular as time goes on because it still has most of the ease of print found with basic PLA, uh, but is better for making mechanical or longer standing parts. Next, we're going to take a look at silk PLA, which is regular PLA with elastomer additives, giving the material a semi-translucent look and the feeling of silk. Now, this material looks beautiful and the extra material that's added in really helps hide some of the layer lines and artifacts that you find traditionally in FDM 3D printing. And now on to glitter, sparkly PLA. Now, this is a very typical PLA with ultra-fine particles added, creating a shimmering effect on the material. Now, this is also gonna help mask up those layer lines a bit and just give an overall uh, beautiful part look at the end of the day. And next, we're gonna look into wood and metal embedded PLA. Now, these are very unique materials that have either wood flakes or metal powder to help create uh, finish effects that make it look like the material that's added. Now, within uh, PLA, this can be really cool because with uh, wood embedded, you can actually stain some of these materials, especially depending on the amount of wood that's put into it, or you can really pull that natural wood color out of it. And for the metal ones, it gives this, this shimmering gleam uh, that really helps uh, people understand what you were going for when you made that product. And finally, we have carbon fiber PLA, which is a composite material with carbon fiber added into a generic PLA. Uh, this material can be extremely abrasive on your nozzles, but create some very sturdy, strong parts. And now let's talk about the benefits of PLA. So first of all, ease of print, plain and simple. Uh, PLA extrudes at a relatively low temperature of approximately 175 to 200 degrees Celsius and does not require a heated vent, although it can help with larger prints. Beyond that, we have bridging. PLA is the best, by far, bridging material that you can use on FDM, and this is due to the low print temperature and the relatively quick cooling. Further to this, uh, PLA comes in a wide variety of colors and additives that can really bring a sparkle to any project that you want to do. Now, let's talk about fumes. Uh, when you're printing any type of thermal plastic, fumes are unavoidable. Uh, but with PLA, the fumes are non-toxic and they actually tend to smell rather sweet, almost like a sugar cookie baking in the background. As PLA is sourced from plants, it's biodegradable and will break down in one to three years naturally in an exposed environment. Uh, PLA is also recyclable in most areas. And just to finish off with the benefits, it is inexpensive. It is one of the least expensive FDM materials you can buy. And this is due to its, the fact that it's a renewable material and it's low cost of manufacturing. 
And now let's talk about some of the shortcomings of PLA. Uh, due to the homogenous nature of PLA, its bonds are weak and the layer lines are filled with micro holes, leading to stress fractures, making the material relatively weak and brittle. In addition to the brittleness, uh, when PLA is exposed to force heat or direct sunlight, it can constrict, distort, or just straight up fracture. And the final shortcoming for PLA is that it has low temperature and chemical resistance. Uh, PLA is extremely susceptible to heat and chemicals. Uh, it will begin to warp, distort, dissolve um, when it's exposed. And now let's talk about the optimal print settings for PLA. But before we do, I want to say always look at the manufacturer recommended print settings and start from there. For the hot end temperature, you're going to be looking at about 175 to 220 degrees Celsius. Now at 175, the filament is going to come out barely heated and you're gonna end up with a poor melt zone between the two different printed layers, but it, it can physically come out at that temperature. And at 220, you're gonna be looking at a lot of blobbing and oozing. Uh, typically for myself, I print anywhere from about 190 to 205 as the optimal range for PLA, but it does vary from material to material. So when it comes to table heating with PLA, it's totally optional and it's really not required for small prints. Now, if you're doing a very big print, you know you're gonna go through multiple spools of filament, you may wanna have uh, some table heating going on there to stop from any flexing or lifting during the course of the print. And if you do, 45 to 60 degrees Celsius should take care of you. Enclosures. Enclosures are not recommended for PLA. And the reason for that is it's going to lessen your bridging span, your bridging capabilities, your overhangs. You really want to cool this PLA as fast as possible, which is why you're also going to want to have that cooling fan cranked up to 100%. And now let's talk about recommended build surfaces. Luckily, PLA likes to attach just about anything. We personally use build tack plates, but we've also had a lot of success with glass plates and even just printing on raw aluminum. And finally, adhesion. So when it comes to adhesion with PLA prints, uh, hairspray works fantastic. Go for that high hold stuff, you know, the one with the big five on it. Um, or painter's tape or glue also works quite well. And now we're gonna start talking about troubleshooting PLA issues. So when printing PLA, uh, you're gonna notice that you can get, end up with some stringing, some oozing. Uh, this is a sign of one of two things. Either your temperature is too high and you can bring that down by five degrees at a time to kind of see if it corrects the using while still getting good print quality. Uh, or you can increase your retract rate, which is gonna pull that filament back up even farther every time it tries to travel, uh, which should also lead to less stringing. And now we're gonna take a look at bridging issues, sinking and deformation. PLA is extremely sensitive to the exterior temperature uh, while printing. This is why we said in the prior slide, definitely do not use an enclosure with this, or if you do, leave it open, um, because that is going to affect your print's ability to cool. And if your print is not cooling fast enough, what will happen is you'll start to see some pulling or some sinking um, and very droopy bridges, and, and that's not what you want when you're 3D printing. Uh, so the best thing you can do is have a dedicated parts fan. If you find that the one you have is not working, throw a nice upgrade fan in there. You can do that for under 20 bucks. Um, and move your printer to a cooler environment like a garage or a basement or something like that if you have access to those facilities. Well, that wraps up our episode on PLA. So hopefully you guys have learned lots of cool new facts about PLA that's gonna help you make better products at home because that's what we're all about here at 3DF. And if you wanna see more videos about 3D printing, turning, EDM, machining, G-code programming, and all that good stuff. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button. I heard a rumor that Other Xander is going to be doing a episode on M-code programming next week, so stay tuned. Just remember, it's more fun to print with PLA than PLA.